Hello my friends. <laughs> it's really nice to have you here today. Today's topic actually comes via a request in my inbox and I'm appreciative for that. These are really difficult topics to talk into and yet for real healing right at the root we need to get to the bottom of these things and understand just a little bit more. I'm learning with you. Today I want to speak into the father wound. Do I have one? Yes. That's why I feel like I'm an expert to speak into this. Are you part of the epigenetic pool that your father has left within you? Was your father wounded and has he passed things on through your DNA? And how can we shift those things and get to a higher state of, I don't know, like richness? How can we step out of that generational curse? Was your father absent? emotionally, physically, for time? Was he abusive maybe? All of those things can lead to a deep father wound. Did you know that the heavenly God describes himself as a father? This is what traumatized me from even wanting to think about a God, even wanting to tap, tap into that higher fire energy. God describes in the masculine himself as fire and yet the spirit is water. So a complete and utter disconnect with the higher fire energy disconnects you with a complete and utter state of higher consciousness as well because it all links into your chi. I'll try to explain this gently and chip away if you have any questions we can research them together. We're all unlearning to learn in order to be healed so that we can heal earth. So yes my father was absent emotionally he was angry he was abusive and it left deep deep scars my father didn't like himself very much and he projected a lot of that mess onto me and as a little child you're not emotionally able to catch that or hold it you don't know what to do with that so a lot of that gets buried in the cells I want to show you something really interesting that I've learned about. You may or may not have seen this before. It shocked me when I first found out that we're talking primordial cells when you were first conceived. What does the sperm grow into and why does your father have such an imprint vibrationally in everything that you see, think and do? Let me show you. Oops, there we go. A little bit clunky there. Here's the sperm. And here is your nervous system in your spine attached to your brain. Did you know that this grows into this? Is that starting to sink in a little bit? I want you to look it up for yourself and don't just take my, um, you know, words on this. This takes a little bit of study and aha moments for yourself. But if you are growing, if everything within you, your energy centers, your seven chakra points, they're the main ones, right? They are running within us, are all holding emotions. Yeah, your nervous system is often caught in fight, flight, freeze, fawn. There's five Fs, I think. Okay, so if I'm permanently in a state of fear, which might come from a trauma that happens with my main caregivers, I'm going to keep reacting uh, emotionally with those triggers whether or not there's an actual problem currently today I have no problems to make me fearful and I've been for decades now working on the triggers but I used to run in a permanent state of fear it was uh, functional anxiety for me it manifests in different ways for different people did it come from not having a secure relationship with my father absolutely the father in our unit is a fractal of a heavenly being above that is you know we've got father and mother father is fire energy mother is spirit she links more into breath and water your elements these are your elements so what does your spine hold it holds water it holds the bone marrow this spirit travels on the water those waters did you know come from your mother's uh, fluid from within the womb and not just hers it's her mother's and her mother's before her you've got generations of this uh, amniotic fluid held within your spine this is the encasing to your nervous system that's pulling in chi energy from the etheric realm 
it's crazy stuff it's amazing but once you understand this you'll see how we are integral vibrational beings what vibration are you holding are you holding trauma from your father are you holding trauma from your mother well a little thing that might show you is um, where you're wounded and that takes a little bit of going inward yeah who's wounded me so here's a few things you may tick a couple or you may tick them all just see if this resonates with you a little few symptoms that you might have if you're suffering with a father wound it doesn't mean your father's bad your father's just passing on what he's learned in his vibration so to speak and once i recognize that i've learned how to forgive without having contact i've learned how to forgive and feel safe i don't have to have contact in order to seemingly uh, be perceived as a good person in society i'm okay with having separateness from my unsafe father and still telepathically sending him love and compassion for the traumas that he suffered and may may or may not get out of before he reaches his death so here's a few things to look for low self-esteem are you struggling with low self-esteem uh, i myself was and yet i was very good at masking it up functional anxiety is completely and utterly possible in fact i'll say it to you if somebody looks like they're very together they're probably less likely to be running in authenticity and that could be a symbol of self-esteem issues. Anger and depression, are they signs that you might be holding? Are they leading you back to a root issue of having a, farm, a, father, a father wound? You know, these things run very, very deep and they take a little bit of processing that might happen with tears. Tears are an awesome thing. They release a chemical within us to bring absolute healing. The Bible says that your tears are counted in heaven. Remember, your tears contain salt and salt is the crystalline thing that needs to be released in order for new crystals to build and bring healing within you. Um, rigid boundaries. Maybe you're suffering in deep, the deep desire to control every situation, every circumstance around you. Everybody uh, needs to run things by you. You find it really difficult to release and trust others. You're grappling for control. This could be a sign that you have a father wound. Or the pendulum can swing the other way and you could be really loose. Uh, a lot of women that I work with that have deep father wombs might be labeled as promiscuous, for example. I don't like to label people. I see that everything has a root and I hold compassion for these things. I hate it when people get put into a box and said, you know, she's a whatever or, you know, she's this, that, you know, with regard to sexual promiscuity. Because it's very easy to see uh, when you get to the root of it that that could be that she's just looking for that protector, that provider, things that your father essence or that fire essence is meant to provide for you. Um, this is why Yahushua says, I'm your husband, make a king. He's stepping in to fill a gap, a void of that protective energy. This is the masculine energy is meant to be the protector, the provider. I'm not saying that women don't have rights or equal rights, but what we're saying here is that everything in nature has its place. And so if you link the feminine energy into wind and water energies, you'll see how they're all working together. And if you if you completely reject all masculine energy or as the feminine, like I did, pick it all up and try to be all of that yourself, it's not balanced and you just end up, you know, faking it until you make it basically. Um, you might make poor choices in relationship um, partners and it might be patterns. Uh, I remember when I was dating and I fell into really toxic relationships. One of the guys, um, he was so abusive. I'm seriously lucky to be alive. I was totally protected by the angelic realm. When I look back, I, I remember things where I should have died or like the, the car would miss the tree as he was trying to kill us both and strange things happening like he'd kick in the glass pane window and I would 
flop into slow motion and it wouldn't break and I back then I wasn't particularly spiritual so I'd just look at it and go that was weird and I'd bury it because it was too difficult to process now I know what I know that matter is all moving and that it wasn't my destiny that I had greater things to do and that I needed to learn from those scenarios I can look back and have an actual giggle about it now that I've healed my father's wound because I look to this fire energy from above instead of instead of from an imperfect person I've sent my own earthly father compassion um, this is why the word says don't call anyone father on earth why do you think the pope wants to be called father he's standing in the gap do you see what i mean like that's a gatekeeper blocking you from pulling in chi fire energy from the etheric realm father is universal it's universal energy it's fire energy that's there to heal there to protect there to have you step into a higher vibratory state and you hold that within your waters below it's beautiful stuff once you know so uh was your father absent was your father emotionally absent was your father abusive if so we cut cords with that by choosing forgiveness i will reiterate you don't need to have a close relationship a lot of gurus teachers pastors i don't know anyone as a a minor gatekeeper might tell you that you have to patch things up and have a functional relationship in order to show that you've forgiven. I beg to differ on that. I think some people may not ever grasp these things, um, these concepts, this side of death. And if they're choosing to live an unsafe life, you need self-love boundaries first. So I have made that decision personally with my father in that I will choose to love him long distance because it's very difficult in his presence to feel safe or respect. Uh, I can choose to respect him long distance if I see him as a wounded being that he is and, and therefore I have compassion, but he's not going to be around my kids, for example. And we've had big discussions about that within my family. I'm totally at peace with that. So you do what feels right to you how do we change our DNA though? This is the question. Remember the encasing and your nervous system's all linked into your father's chi energy. This is the fire, this is the sperm that entered your mother's womb that became your primordial cell and then the cells start to split. It's beautiful stuff. It's magical actually, but we're carrying vibrations of dysfunction and to be uh, quantum, we need to step into the energy of being a curse breaker so forgiveness is the perfect thing for that. One thing I could teach you is to speak spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit. I speak spirit to spirit because I recognize that the spirit within me can be expansive. I can speak spirit to, sp I can expand my spirit's energy as a light field over my dad. And I'll say to him or anyone else that you're struggling with, actually, this is a very interesting technique that the spirits taught me that I'm teaching you now. Try it and see if you like it. If you've got problems with anyone, you say to them, you sit in meditation and you, you expand, you visualize your field stretching over them and you say to them, my spirit's willing to make peace with you, but your flesh is weak. You can't hear me. We're on a different vibration here. And so therefore I'm going to send you love telepathically. Thank you that you're resonating with this chat. I really appreciate your comments. Um, yeah, okay. So re recognizing that our parents are human and they may have even had a more difficult wandering in this desert realm than we've had, we can step into compassion, which is a very high vibrational energy i'll repost this one up i'm thinking of clipping it and popping it onto my youtube because my insta is getting a wee bit censored so i might clip this into a reel and then pop the whole video on my youtube channel you can go back there if you want to process any of this at your own pace okay here's something that i teach clients to do if they've got a father wound write them a letter just write down all those feelings that are trapped. Remember that our nervous system runs off of energies or emotional waves that we're holding. So I would say to you, channel those emotions into matter. 
Let those waves that are trapped within you, all the pain, all the things you couldn't say as a child, all the frustration, all the anger, all the rage. I, I don't want to give you the labels. You've got them. Like we heal ourselves. All I'm doing is creating within this little portal here a safe space for you to hear. I'm teaching you things that I have practiced that have really worked for me. And I've experienced miracle signs and wonders. In fact, the spirit said to me one night in sleep space, space that my father had died. I went and told my whole family in my ignorance. Uh, I didn't really understand. And then we had a little laugh because spirit speaks to me often, most nights. And I, I got angry and I said, well, my, my father's still alive. Like I heard he was going to die within the year. But I didn't understand the complexity in that what the spirit was saying to me is that the DNA shift was cutting from that father to a heavenly father. My DNA was shifting into God restoration. My DNA was shifting into fire, blue flame fire. Have you seen it? You know, some people speak of this. I've seen it. It's hit my head when I was in Indonesia. A blue bolt hit my head that created and caused my actual awakening. But epigenetically i'm speaking you need to be holding a new wave a new vibration of higher thoughts higher emotions higher fields so that your light fields reactivated reintegrated with your true father which is the fire from heaven all angelic beings are fire you can get back to angelic being did you know <laughs> it's pretty exciting so we send our father's love writing down everything it's unpacking brings the healing if you need somebody to be your witness then please reach out or find somebody that you can trust this isn't public stuff and i'm not even asking you to send the letter sometimes doing a little ritual is enough As i tell clients sometimes go to which ever element you can relate to maybe you have a memory with your dad like for my grandfather for example I think of water because he used to take me fishing. So if if you've got a memory trapped like that as a child with your father wound, it might be really healing to introduce that element. So maybe that little letter goes into the earth or you burn it or you tear it up and blow it off a cliff into the ocean. These things can bring great healing because no longer are those emotions stuck within you. They've been lifted out and released. Yeah, spiritual healing's all about releasing and you can do it. If you need a witness, please DM me. I'd be happy to just pray for you while you're doing that. And um, just to be heard. All of us, if we're just heard, we're so empowered, right? Um, so I've taught you about chat spirit to spirit. That's a really good one. Uh, and learn to disengage from the same programs or belief systems that chogged in when you were having that dysfunctional life. I specifically struggle with blessing myself enough to succeed financially because I can hear my father's words echoing over me from age 12. And he was very unconscious when he said this. I, I can see him now as a wounded child, but he said to me, I won't amount to anything because I didn't have a father. At age 12, and you'll see you've got pivotal life stages in your uh, maturity of emotions. At age 12, I literally told dad I'd had enough of his bullshit and I chose to cut from him at that age. I was very mature looking back for my age um, in how I managed that. But of course, the wounded child in him, and he's equally as wounded, so there is no judgment. He manifested angrily about that and told me that I'd end up to be a prostitute, actually, is what he cursed me with. So this sticks deep, right? The cells, the water holds the curse. So I've spent decades shifting that out and occasionally it creeps back in again. But the self-worth within me was um, affected. I just... I'm not saying it might be quite so dramatic for you, but all of us might have a little bit of a father wound at some point. Is it blocking you from pulling in a higher energy of fire from the heavenly realm is my question to you. The etheric realm, look, it's all mirrors. It's all imprints, right? So if you're running in compassion, forgiveness, love energies, these are much higher vibrational energies than rage, fear, um, 
discouragement, depression, you know, those things aren't bad. They're, they're actually our teachers. So now I can alchemize this pain and thank my dad telepathically, of course, and say, thank you for teaching me what love isn't so that I can choose to witness a better love for my children. I can choose to be a curse breaker. I can choose to break the patterns. I can choose to be an emotional being that's a little more stable and doesn't swing up and down like I used to. I used to be on very high highs and very low lows. And if you said something to me, I would give you the power to rock my wave. I'm no longer that person because I've recognized that that is giving away my own internal fire. That is giving away my energy to something that's technically, uh, you know, mine to hold. This is my internal fire, my internal chi, my internal um, holdings of the spiritual fire that's within me. And I won't give that power to somebody that's wounded. Is that dropping in? Um, so yeah, behaviors, we need to just recognize the patterns within ourselves in order to break the belief system which links into ego uh, to have change shift in our lives so look for the triggers look for things um, that associate those feelings that are buried within you they can be things like a smell um, the volume of like if somebody yells at me that triggers me because I suffered a lot of abuse with my father so they trigger me and sometimes you can be so angry at somebody and yet they're not even directing it to you it's just the trigger that we're learning to manage so my goal today for you is that you find the root of the issue and if it is a father wound choose forgiveness try those little steps and pull from heavenly fire that's much more compassionate to healing you protecting you providing for you sometimes we work too hard to try to make a difference in the world because our fathers didn't do that for us and and these wounds are roots that run deep guys it's a vibration right through your spine which is the encasing of your nervous system your tree so my goal today is cut roots with the dysfunction that is within the epigenetics of the curse of your family and graft into the tree of life and climb higher and pull the fire in from the etheric realm. Uh, you are a spiritual being. Spiritual beings are not bound by the body or the mind. Did you see on that diagram how it grows into the brain? Yeah, this is why I don't want you to be too mental about everything. Yeah, mental, too mental, overthinking things, overthinking your pain. We become what we meditate on. And if you're only meditating on the problem, that isn't your solution. Reach out if you would like a coaching session. I love nothing more than discussing these things and watching you fly. Um, I wish you well for today. Take care.